We're now going to have a quick look at how to create elevations and sections. We're not going to labor too much on that, but most importantly, we're going to look right now at how to adjust the settings in elevations to represent materials differently. I've got a few elevations over here, so I'm going to use these settings again rather than having to adjust these too much. In a previous video, I explained the idea of depth of field or limited depth in order to represent and, and how we might choose or where we might choose to place our elevation. I'll just run over that again briefly. So if we look at this elevation, what have I done? I've drawn the elevation long enough that it's going to show the entire building. We see here at the moment it's got an unlimited depth but it also has another line across here. That line represents this, our marked distant area. And what that means it's showing the depth of field. So when I open this, let's have a quick look. That was just right click, open source view. We can see that the elements that are directly in front of us are represented in full color. And the elements that are a little bit further back are represented just in a black and white. Now, what defines that? When we go into the settings, our model display shows cut elements and we can choose how we represent cut elements. Because it's an elevation, we don't really have cut elements. That just means I'm cutting through the ground and that's it at the moment. The most important one for an elevation is this one, uncut elements. And this represents the majority of things in our model. And then finally we have the marked distant area and that represents everything behind that. We're going to have a look at a different setting in this case. Right now we're going to turn off the marked distant area. I'm going to then also move this elevation forward so it's sitting in front of this garden wall and the reason why that's important in this instance is so that we're not blocking a lot of our view. So let's just have a quick look at what difference we've created already. So we're now seeing the entire model there is no marked distance area, so we're not seeing the background shown any differently to the foreground. The glass is being shown as blue. Uh, it's not transparent, and that's normally how we want to see an elevation. We don't normally want transparency completely. Some elements we may want to be transparent, some elements we may not want to be transparent. What would be a good definition of that? Here we've got a, a pool fence, and that pool fence is being shown as solid, not transparent. But because it's not transparent or opaque, it's blocking what's behind it. Now thankfully, because it's only half height, we can see that there's still elements behind. We can read and understand this door to a degree. We assume that it goes all the way to the ground, but you might not know otherwise. So how could we represent that differently? What we might need to do is turn on transparency and then use a different surface for our pull fence to our doors and windows. Let's go into the setting of that. So we see at the moment they're both called RMD glass, so that's not going to be very helpful. Let's have a quick look at how we could adjust that. So we'll change this one. Let's go into our option surfaces. I'm going to go to where I have one that's got RMD glass and I'm going to go new, duplicating the original and I'll call this one balustrade. Hmm, of course it does. Let's see where that one went. Glass balustrade, there we go. Now what we're going to do in this case is make sure that the transmittance or the transparency of this is very, very high. And then we're going to go to the RMD glass. And in this case, we're going to turn off the transparency altogether. Now once we've made this setting, we can go back into our settings of our elevation 
and we can choose to turn on transparency. The one thing that I need to change is I need to change the representation of these. And so what we're seeing now is because we've turned transparency on, and now that we've represented this material as transparent and this material, or this material as non-transparent, we're able to choose within our model what we can see and what we can't see. So that's probably a, a good way of thinking about it, that something that is not the building element, something that is a fixture or a landscape element should maybe be transparent so we can see through it. Unfortunately, we don't have that option really within this elevational to make it semi-transparent. It's either transparent or it's not. We could, in the 3D view, if we were doing a cine, cine render, render, then we'd be able to change that to make it partially transparent a lot better. But for now, that's about as good as we're going to get. The one extra thing that I want to do is to go into the settings of this now and to turn on our sun shadows as well. And the way that I'm using my sun shadows is I'm using a 25%. So by doing that, it's going to darken each of the surfaces. And so we're seeing each of the colors becomes darker as the shadow is cast onto these surfaces. And because I'm using some trellises along the northern facade, it makes of some very, very interesting shadowing. So that looks quite good in terms of, again, a, a visual presentation technique. We have to decide if that's what we want or if we're after something a bit more technical and therefore choose something that's going to be better for what we're trying to create. And then finally, let's now go back and see if we can more subtly create a, a marked distant area. And then within the marked distant area, we see that we have all of the same possibilities. And so I, instead of making it uniform pen, I can turn that option off. I can turn on my vectorial sun shadows and my vectorial hatching. And instead of being a uniform pen color, let's leave it as own surface color. Let's view what this does. So now we see that it's a lot closer to the representation of what we want. It's just slightly grayed out. So that's really helpful in order to be able to, again, create that depth of field, or some people might call it fog of war, that idea where we've got a, a bit of a delineation or separation from the elements that are at the front to the elements at the back, but we haven't completely washed it out. So that's um, a few different techniques that we can use to get some very interesting effects and results. Now, in a project like this, what it might mean is that you need to have one elevation at the front and then another elevation which shows the back in that true color and representation cutting out this front. So how we do that, let's just try that right now, is to select this same view, I'm going to move this one forward now so it's sitting about here. And I'm going to extend that distant marked area, open with current view. And we can see that that's now showing all of this back area really well. The only thing that it's also doing is because we're creating a section effectively, we're able to see this sectional elevation under the ground, which isn't exactly what we're after. So to fix that, the way that I commonly do that is just to use a fill two-dimensionally. I'm going to do this very roughly for now. But just to fill in what we don't want to see. in terms of an elevation or representation. Uh, what I would nearly always do is then give that a very, very thick line to represent a ground line. Again, it's not a true representation. Let's uh, right click, true line weight. It's not a true representation of what's happening, but in terms of understanding an elevation, it might be simpler and that might be what you're trying to create 
for a drawing. Now again we see that I hadn't updated these because I'd only changed these bottom ones so now I can select these top surfaces and represent these also as balustrades which means they turn transparent. So hopefully this has been helpful uh, for you to understand that the possibilities within ARCHICAD of creating and editing some elevation or techniques. Of course creating a section is very similar and we've looked at that before. I particularly wanted to look at the elevation and its functionality today.